South America, 15 million years ago, a land of strange and fascinating creatures, such as Macrochenia. These long-limbed mammals may look a lot like camels, but they have no surviving relatives. They live in vast herds for mutual safety from the continent's top predators, some of which are very close by. In most of the world, mammalian predators have risen up to be top dog, but here on the isolated South American landmass, the descendants of the dinosaurs took over, and the most fierce of them all are the terror birds. This family of predatory birds come in many sizes, with the largest reaching close to three meters tall. Armed with large foot claws and hooked beaks, these birds specialize in outrunning their prey and striking with lightning quick attacks, a hunting strategy that has worked for over 50 million years. The herd of Macrochenia nervously feed, with eyes to the south of them. Standing not far from them in the open is a Brontornis. This stocky species can weigh over 300 kilograms, and is easily capable of ripping one of the herbivores apart. But the Macrochenia know he is too far to launch a successful attack. It is obvious he is scouting the herd, looking for weaknesses. Standing tall and firm, the Brontornis scans each member of the herd and patiently waits. He does not have the speed to outrun them, but sooner or later, an opportunity will arrive. The day marches on, and so does the herd of Macrochenia, all the time shadowed by the massive Brontornis. The darker it gets, the more likely he is to make a move, since his vision is far greater than the mammals, even in the dead of night. And with that sight, he sees something the herbivores have not. Under the cover of the nearby forest, another terror bird is stalking, steadily moving closer and closer to the herd. This is not another Brontornis. It is another species, called Kellenken. The tallest of all terror birds, standing over 2.5 meters tall. But not a heavyweight like Brontornis. This species is built for speed, and despite its size, the huge bird has managed to sneak up on the Macrochenia, who are too distracted by the menacing Brontornis to have noticed his advance. With the herd distracted, the Kellenken has been able to make a quick advance, however the real test would begin once he broke cover. Standing to his full height, the tall hunter burst into a sprint, his long legs making swift strides through the tall grass. The Macrochenia see him and begin to run. They were fast, but took longer to get up to top speed, and the terror bird was almost upon them. Though he could have gone for one of the adults, he went for the young. He wanted a quick kill, not a struggle. Honing in on one of the calves, he loomed over the fleeing youngster. He then opened his beak wide and drove the downwards-facing tip of his beak into the juvenile's back. The young Macroquinia yelped in pain and stumbled across the ground, giving the Kellenken plenty of time for his finishing attack. The terror bird moved to the side of the youngster and this time went for the head. When he bit down, the hook of the edge of his beak punctured straight through the target's skull killing it instantly. He then lifts his head up with the body of the calf and then tosses it through the air before slamming it down onto the ground to make sure it's dead. The young Macrochenia doesn't move and the rest of the herd continues to flee while the Kellican prepares to feast. Holding the body still with his foot, he uses his sharp beak to carve away lines of flesh and swallows them eagerly. Not too far away, the Brontornis has been watching the scene unfold before him. Seeing the Kellenken make a successful kill, he stands and begins to march towards the taller bird. Taking another strip of flesh, the Kellenken lifted his head and observed his surroundings, quickly seeing the Brontornis approaching from the hill. This makes him try to eat faster. For this is what the Brontornis has been waiting for. Waiting for another predator to secure a kill so he can walk right up and take it. The Kellenken swallows another strip of flesh and then faces the incoming threat. He stamps on the ground and screeches, trying to make himself seem as intimidating as possible. He may be the taller of the two, but the Brontornis is far heavier, and he knows it. As the Kellenken flails on the spot, 
the brute casually marches towards him. When he is only 10 meters away, he suddenly darts forward, mouth open ready to strike. The Kellenken doesn't try to fight. He turns tail and retreats, abandoning his kill to the bully. The heavier terror bird enjoys his meal, while the taller, thinner bird has to make do with what he could tear away. Brontornis are more than capable of hunting their own food, but almost every predator will go after carrion if it is available, and it helps to be able to intimidate other predators, so that you can have it all to yourself. The Kellenken preens his wings in the distance. He could wait for the usurper to finish feeding, so he could eat the scraps, but hoped no other terror birds showed up in the meantime. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the Forest Rockaday family, more commonly known as the Terror Birds. Forest Rockids originally evolved in South America, though one species may have lived in Africa, but its place in the Forest Rockaday family is still debated. They first appeared around 62 million years ago and lived to about 0.1 million years ago. There are over 25 species in this family, with most getting between 1 and 1.5 meters tall, but some would evolve to be apex predators, standing over 2.5 meters tall. They were most definitely predators, as they have the same hooked beak of other predatory birds, and their skulls were massive, supported by a powerful neck. It was first thought that they only hunted small prey, and too frail to go after larger animals, as they had a relatively weak bite force. However, studies of their skulls show that they were built to perform powerful strikes as opposed to shaking their prey from side to side. The strong neck would allow the sharp beak to puncture deep into large prey, and they likely used their strong legs to kick prey off their feet and even slash at them with their talons. Research also found that they weren't built for quick movements, which would have been needed to catch small, agile prey. Instead, they were sprinters, moving fast in a straight line. Some species reached up to 60 kilometers per hour. The bones of the skull were very tightly packed together, making it much more durable, especially when it came to forward and backwards movements. So not only good for striking at prey, but also stripping away flesh from bodies. For smaller prey it managed to catch, it's likely they swallowed them whole. Terror birds became the main apex predator species of South America after the extinction of the dinosaurs, beating out mammals and reptiles who were conquering the rest of the planet. Though some other large predatory ground birds did evolve in other parts of the world, such as North America and Australia, these evolved separately from the forest rockaday family, and are not closely related. One species, Titanus walleri, which was one of the largest, was able to make it into North America, being found in both Texas and Florida. This would make forest rockets the only known South American predators to successfully move north when the two continents merged. However, Titanus was in North America 5 million years ago. This is about 2 million to 2.5 million years before the land bridge between North and South America was created. So how did it get there? The current theory is island hopping. After all, many extant large birds, like emus and cassowaries, are quite good swimmers. However they got there, they were able to carve out a living despite there already being many large mammal predators there. In fact, the original idea of terror birds being outcompeted by invading species from North America is being questioned, as many of them were already extinct by the time these newcomers arrived. It is more likely changing climates affected the larger species of forest rockaday. While some smaller species may have survived for longer, some species such as Philopteris may have been present until 96,000 or even 6,300 years ago. Their closest living relative is the Seriyama, a 90 centimeter tall long-legged bird that is known to kill prey by lifting them with their head and then slamming them into the ground, a killing technique it could have held onto from its terror bird ancestors. The most well-known species is their tallest member, Kellenken, which could have been over 2.5 meters tall and over 100 kilograms. 
with the largest skull of any bird at 71 centimetres long. There were many others filling in different predator niches, and they dominated their home continent as few mammals rose up to be predators because of them. They represent the continued reign of the dinosaurs after their extinction 65 million years ago, and ruled until relatively recently, when they suddenly died off when the Ice Ages became a serious issue. During their time, they were brutal and efficient predators that no doubt lived up to their name, a family of birds that kicked, pecked, and slammed their prey on the ground, puncturing and tearing their victims apart for millions of years. But what do you think of Forest Rockaday? And in a future episode, is there a specific species of this family you'd like me to cover in detail? Until next time, thank you for watching.